Okay, let's get started. So, hello everyone and welcome to your ICAM Foundation webinar on multicam posts. Uh, my name is Alexander Gordon and I'm joined by my colleague Daniel Wang who will help me on the presentation today. Hi everybody. So, today we're going to develop a post using uh, a controller Siemens 840D and we will make that post uh, be supported by uh, Siemens NX, Katia V5, and Mastercam 2020. So the same post uh, will be able to support all three CAM systems. We will also, uh, for this example, we will mainly uh, do the implementation of cycle 832, which is the uh, high-speed machining uh, for the Siemens controller using two method through post processors commands or and afterwards we'll show you a little bit more advanced uh, technique inside of the cam system to be able to output the information that you need. So let's dive right into it. So cycle A32 use three parameters. Uh, you have the first parameter which is a machining tolerance so it's a numerical value. Uh, then you have the machining type that you want to use so if you use the parameter off, you just turn off cycle, 800, uh, cycle 832. It's the same thing as writing cycle 832 open and close brackets without any parameter inside. And then you have the rough, the semi-fin and the finish for roughing, semi-finishing and finishing. And it's important that you have the double quote in that parameter for the command to be uh, uh, catch correctly inside of the controller. And then the last, uh, the last parameter is uh, dependent, uh, dependent on what's the uh, controller software that you have. So if you are under, uh, if you are 7.5 and under, you need to put the value zero. If you are using over 7.5 or a 840D SL, then you, uh, with version six on word, you need to use a parameter one. For our example, we're gonna use the parameter one. So let me open a post. So this post is a basic post that I uh, got by just creating a new post, then going to general information. I chose a mill uh, machine type with a vertical mill three axis and a Siemens 840D for uh, milling. And then I just generated the post. It populated all the questionnaire for me and those macros comes with the post. So the first thing we'll do is we will do a quick test with an X and see how, uh, how the output looks like uh, from the start. So here, if I go with an X, I'll just do a quick test. So I, instead of using the play button, the start runtime, uh, I'm using the test button object. And this give me a quick way of uh, outputting codes and just going back and forth between the uh, uh, the testing and the questionnaire uh, without having to rewind every time. So here I go test. I see that I have one. Uh, I have some errors, so I can just look at what's the error. And here I have system variable dollar TCL. So dollar TCL is the system variable inside of Campos. Uh, storing the tool line compensation value. So to uh, solve this, this means that I don't have any tool line compensation active. So I'm going to go in my control description and then tool fixture compensation. And if we look in the, uh, the line comp, it says currently that I have no support for it. It's not checked. So I'm going to check the tool line compensation. And since we're using a uh, Siemens 840D, we don't have any G code to output the tool length. We only have an offset, uh, which is set to DS2. So we will output the maximum of two value. And if there's any zero in front, we'll suppress it. I'm also going to put the offset R unique by tool and use one as default offset value. Then I'm going to go back to my test, uh, run the test again. And now I have completed it successfully. That means I have no errors. So 
this is uh, one thing. Now we can take a look at the code quickly. I see that I have a D01 M6 and I have a D1 Z5. So I have it twice, it's not necessary. So this one comes with the post, the T01 D01 M6 comes with the post inside of the tape macro. So if we look at, if we look here, we do have or here in this had tool cell, uh, tool offset. So I'm going to keep that one and I'm going to remove the one from the tool length compensation. To do that, uh, I can simply right click on the D1 and reg comp length. So it's going to bring me to questionnaire where it is. And right now I can see offset register is selected in blue. That's the question I need to modify. So a quick way of doing that is I still want to have my tool, uh, my tool length active. So I need to keep that offset selected, but I can prevent the post from outputting the value by just unchecking the, the box on the DS2. It's still assigned to comp length and then I'm gonna click on select. So it's still there, but when I'm gonna post, it's not gonna output the D1 on that one. So if I run again the, uh, the post successfully, so I still have my tool length being uh, processed by uh, cam post. Uh, but here on the N10, we don't have the D1 uh, Z5 anymore. We just have our uh, plunging, so that's good. So the first part we'll go with uh, is the uh, post-processor instructions. So in NX, uh, the way you do that is through the uh, start event and end event using a user, uh, user event. So I go in object, start events and if I go to user define that let me enter either comments or commands that I need to uh, that I want to help with. For our example we're going to use the set slash mch tall. I'm using set as a major word because it is not a word that has any uh, that has any uh, background commands already processed by campos. So it's a, it's a major word available to you. So you don't have to create a new major word, but there's nothing attached to it. So I can use it whatever, the, however I want it to use. So here I'm gonna use set slash machine tall. Then I'm gonna enter a numerical value. Then I'm gonna use what type of machining I wanna do. So for this example, we'll go with a uh with the roughing operation and i need single quote double quote because i need in my parameter uh for the output the tape output to have the uh, double quotes and the single quotes are to say uh to so campos recognize that it is a string so by doing this i now have a user event and when i output my code so i'm going to select the three axis and click on more output CLSF. And if I go here, click on OK, I do have a low uh, set machine tall 001. Let me zoom in a little bit, it's a little small. So I have my machine tall 001 rough. OK, that's good. So this is what I want to do. So now I'm gonna test again my post, but this time I'm gonna select my new output. So this is the output that I, uh, that I created. So I'm gonna open it. And then I do see my machine tall 0 0.001 rough. Then I'm gonna put, so I do have some warnings, okay? So what's the warning? Set, obviously we haven't created the set command yet in the post, so that's what I said, set is not being used for anything in Campos by, uh, by default, so I need to set it. So uh, I will create a macro using set as my major word. And then I'm gonna enter my, uh, I'm gonna type my macro. So machine tall, then since the, the first variable is a real dollar P1, and the second variable is a string, so I need to put two single quotes uh, to uh, so campos recognize it as a string and then the only thing i'm going to do is assign about uh, assign those dollar p val uh, arguments to a variable to store them 
So I'm using tall underscore value for the machining tolerance and tall underscore type for the machining type. So right now they are local. I don't want them in local, I want them in global. So I go in declaration macro, add a custom macro, and then I'm gonna say declare global real tall underscore value equals zero. That's my initial value. I want it to be zero. And then global string tall underscore type equal quote quote. So I have an empty string. And this is uh, part uh, almost everything that I need. The last thing I need to do is actually output the code. So here in the operation event. So every time we have an op type, so if I just open the uh, quickly, we do have a operation name. Where's my load tool? Right there. So we have an op type tool and then we have an op type mill. So every time I have an op type, I want to, I want to verify if I have enter value inside of the, uh, the variables to output the correct cycle A32. So that's the reason why we put it in the operation event macro. So what I'll do is that I will check for value. So if tall underscore value not equal to zero. So if it's not, a, if there's a value in the machining tolerance and now I have two cases that I have. Uh, I'm anticipating a little bit compared to Kitia because there's uh, in the advanced uh, section, uh, sometimes the value will not be in output. So I need to take that into account. So the other one is tall underscore type dot not equal to single quote, double quote off, double quote, single quote, or the tall type again. Not equal to empty string. So this. And also, I don't want to uh, to do that. I don't want to output the normal cycle 832 during a tool change. So I'm going to add an end dollar p1 because if we look at the help section, we have dollar p1 operation type. And if we look at what's the possible values for dollar p1, we have one through four, two, three, and four being machining operation and one being a tool. So. I don't want it when it is equal to one. Then I will insert open string psycho A32 open bracket. Then I'll use my string, uh, my string formatting, comma, and using the wild uh, the wild card. So I will put whatever value I find. And since I know it's a, for example, it's a 840 DSL, I'm gonna use the value one for the third parameter and close the, uh, close the string and then just assign value to the string formatting. So when you're using the string formatting for the num number of string formatting you have put on the inside of string, you need to put the same amount of variable outside of it, or you could put uh, you could put hard coded value if needed. And else, I'll just want to insert psycho a thirty two open close bracket. It could also be uh, zero zero off and one, and that would work. Uh, zero off and work, and that would also work, but we'll leave it as empty as it's less, uh, less cluttery in the uh, on the table. And if compile, I have no error, that's good. Click on OK, and now we're going to test the post again. Test successfully, and if we look here just before tool change, 
uh, because the op type tool uh, appears before the load slash tool. So I turn off cycle A32. And then before go uh, starting again, I have my cycle A32 with my rough. For Katia, it's, a, it's pretty much the same thing. I want to input my cycle A32 before my facing. So I'll do it after the tool change. So the operation you select in Katia, uh, when you insert something, it will come afterwards. So in, in the insert in the auxiliary operations, you have the post processor instructions. And I have this pop up here and I get just set machine tall comma zero dot zero zero one comma single quote double quote rough double quote single quote. And now when I output my tape file and uh, my file, it's gonna look like this. And this is the original, yes. Uh, so I want the PP instruction. This is what I uh, separate previously. And we have our machine tall with a correct value. And if we go, and th uh, this time I'll go with uh, the full interface. We go Katia milling. Then I can just press play. There's no errors. And now we do have our cycle A32, cycle A32 with the parameters. Obviously, there's some difference in the numbers because the, the way Katia and NX and MasterCam calculates the toolpath is a little bit different and, all, uh, different and also depending on the parameters and how you control them, you're going to have some difference. But if you have the same parameter, it's going to give you pretty much the same output. So from there, I have a decent startup that I can send to my colleague that's more used to uh, MasterCam and he'll be able to... Uh, uh, to keep working on that. Or if you have somebody else that needs a post like that, uh, uh, he can use, uh, use it. So what I'll do for that is I'll export my post and I'll overwrite this one. And I'll go on talk.icam.com. So this is our foundation, uh, this is our foundation uh, forum where you can share uh, post, discuss uh, problems that you have on post processing uh, and just have some uh, good discussion. And if you have a way of solving a problem that you find it really interesting, you can just post it there. So here I'm going to create so ICAM foundation, foundation webinar. And this uh, we will leave accessible to you guys. So if you go on the uh, foundation uh, forum, you'll be able to get the post that I just uh, modified. And I also upload the uh, source file from NX, Katia, and MasterCam. So you can uh, check out uh, what we did and uh, try to modify it or uh, play with it the way you want it. So. So this, I'm going to put it in the post processor and then I'm just going to upload this file. And I was already at the right place and then just upload it. and create topic. And from there, I'm going to pass the ball to my colleague, Daniel, so he can show you how to do the same thing with MasterCam. All right, thank you, Alex. Um, so now here, um, looking at my screen here, um, we'll see that I'm also on the uh, talk at uh, talk.icom.com. If I refresh the page, I can see um, Alex's later uh, latest upload. I can access it and um, I can download the post that he's created. And uh, what I'm going to do is add on to it uh, and have the uh, master cam be able to run behind his same post. So now that I've downloaded, um, I'm just gonna move this folder, uh, move the post. 
the folder that I know I can work that I'm going to work in. And you guys are going to see, um, sorry for a sec, go back to downloads, drag and drop this to the folder. You guys are going to see this is in DMP, so this is the uh, a format. Now, unfortunately, in DMP format, you you won't be able to, you won't be able to overwrite on top of it. Uh, but that's that's great. So that means when you do download a new uh, post from other people, you get to keep your original file. Uh, for you to be able to save a file, we're going to import this into our own personal databases. We're going to do that through the Jenner. Um, go through the DB Manager. And now, um, generally, you guys will have this, um, only this program data database here. This is the default one. Uh, you guys might have more than one if you guys uh, create your own. I'm just going to import this into the default database. So you're going to right-click, hit Import, and then select the one that we just downloaded off the uh, forum. Open. It's going to ask you if you want to import everything. You say yes. And now you have the post that's imported. Um, now we can make edits to it, um, change the name, do whatever we want. And we always have the initial file here if we ever need to go back to it. So here we're going to hit refresh on our um, on quest. Now you can see that we have the database. We can click on it. And now we're going to test um, our mastercam files and see how it behaves. Now I have this similar part that Alex has shown us in uh, NX and Tia, uh, I'm just going. We're going to work on just the facing operation, and we're going to pull the NCI file out. So you, you select your operation, hit the G1. We're only going to get the NCI file out. Save it, and I already done that earlier today. So we have this file here. Uh, make sure your kit is selected with Mastercam. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to run it. Uh, now the output is very similar to Alex here, um, and more interestingly enough is we have the cycle 832. So whatever code Alex has implemented, we also get it on uh, on our end. Now we want to add, uh, we want to make sure that this now has the uh, values that we're expecting. So um, the tolerance value and then the tolerance type, right? Whether it's um, finishing, roughing, or semi-finishing. Uh, to do that. We're going to use what we call manual entry, which is very similar to um, adding some uh, PP instruction in Katia uh, or uh, user defined events in NX. To do that, we're going to put a red arrow to the top because we want to set it before the facing operation. Right click, mill toolpaths, and then we're going to add a manual entry. And here we're simply going to type in exactly what Alex has typed previously. So um, set slash mch tall, give it a value. And don't forget it's single quote into a double quote. We're going to do rough. Make sure here it's output as a code, um, not as a comment, because we want it as a code. Press OK. And now, again, you can um, select your operations. Uh, post it as an NCI file, and I already did that. So let's see what that gives us. We're gonna go back to Jenner here, do the same thing. And you guys can see, I haven't touched Quest yet, right? I haven't made any modifications to the post. I'm just running the same post that he was running. And you can see here now we have the set machine tall. Um, that's before our actual operation, which is here right below it. And now if you run, we'll see that we get the output as we expect it. Right. So that's one way of um, adding the commands, right? You just hard code the commands and then you catch it through a post processor. Um, uh, here you catch it using a user defined macro uh, in combination with an operation event here. Um, but that's not always uh, the that's that's always the best uh, method of doing it because if your NC programmer forgets to add it or you know puts has a typo in it, then you will get errors. Here's a second way you could do it in Mastercam. 
uh, instead of a manual entry here, we'll, we'll be deleting this manual entry. We'll be using uh, the miscellaneous values here. So you can see I've already um, preset my miscellaneous integers to do a certain function, and then uh, my miscellaneous reals to be a different function. For miscellaneous integers here, we'll be using um, 0, 1, 2, or 3 to set whether we want the cycle 832 to be off, rough, semi-finish, or finish. And then we'll be using the reals to give us the tolerance value. And then I'll show you guys how to catch them inside of, um, of, camp, uh, of Jenner. So we can hit OK here. Again, post it. And I've already done it here, so I'm just going to change my file. And on the surface, we don't have the set machine tool anymore, but we also don't see the, um, those miscellaneous values. And that's because it's not, it's not up front. You have to go through the ASCII view. And it's going to make it larger here. And then you guys are going to have to uh, bear with me here. This is the NCI format of MasterCam. And obviously, we have a, a way to translate all of those codes. Um, and because I know the exact, what I'm looking for, these values here are your miscellaneous integers and your miscellaneous reals. And you're going to ask yourself, well, how, how, do, how do I treat this information? How do I cache this information? Well, we're going to use a, um, what we call a a specific cl uh, class that is specific to uh, each CAM system, a unique class that is specific to the CAM system. For master CAM, it's under uh, the 1001 class. So it's all, it starts with the pound and 1001. Now, every major word has a class associated to it. Uh, to it. Uh, and for example, air would have its own uh, pound value and et cetera. And for master cam uh, and for ed the other cam systems, sometimes they don't need a word and they're just classified with a pound and a value. For master cam, it's 1001. And what we're going to do is catch the subclass. So subclass 1011 and 1012. Do that here, we do pound 1001 colon and where we'll be catching 1011. So that'll be our first macro here. Uh, and we, we're going to store them inside of a $P1 sequence. And I'm just going to put myself a comment here um, to say that these are for the miscellaneous reels. Similarly, I'll do the same for um, the 1012 values. Um, but this time, it's for the miscellaneous integers. Now we have a way to catch those values. Um, and again, I'm storing them inside of a sequence because I know that they come with a sequence of 10 values. So let's start with the miscellaneous integers here. As we saw in MasterCamp, uh, I'm using the integer value to know uh, which, what's the um, type I want to output to the um, cycle A32. Uh, what I'll be using here is a case statement of that value. All right, uh, I know it's in the first position of the sequence, so I'm just going to make a case of $P1 of the first value. And then I have a couple options. All right, when it's 1, I want to set the tall type um, to be equal to rough. I can copy this you know, a couple times. For my other cases, case three, right, this would be semi-fin, this would be finish. And now um, my last case would be off. Now you can here, you can have it as a zero um, or you can have it for others. So if it's not one, two or three, then set it off. Uh, that's a good way. So if anyone decides to put a random value, then you'll force it to be off and that and now we can close our case. Um, so now we have a way to catch a miscellaneous integer and set our tolerance type. We can go back to the miscellaneous reals. And instead of 
um, catching the type. Now we're just going to catch the, the tolerance value. And since we know, again, it's, at the, it's on the first value, we can simply say um, set our tall value to be that $P1, the first value, the first um, value inside of a sequence to be uh, the tolerance value. So now that we've cat, now that we ha have macros to catchies, we can go back to the binary views. Uh, we're just going to step into it so we can kind of roll back. Now, unfortunately, you cannot put breakpoints there, but we can put breakpoints inside of our uh, macros so we can see the results of when we're catching those values. Uh, we're going to run it and see we're going to stop at pound 1001.11. And then we can hover over $P1 and see the values uh, of the miscellaneous um, reels that we're catching. Right? And then we're setting that first value to our tolerance value. And similarly, we're doing the same thing for integers. So we can hover over it. We have one, so we're setting to roughing. And we'll simply hit, I would simply hit play, we'll run through the whole code, and see now that those values are now shown inside of the cycle A32. So this is a secondary method um, to do a very similar effect of manual entry, but instead of hard coding a, uh, your, your code, you're setting it inside one of the features that are available through your CAMP system um, to output a similar code. And what I'm going to do is save this or generate this. I'm gonna export it, send it to Alex. So now he has a post that's able to run, um, that's outputting the same code for three different camp system. So I'm just gonna save this, go back to talk to icam.com. On that same post, I'm going to reply to his post. I'm gonna say, simply upload that version two that I've just created. Um, so we're gonna upload this. And with that, I'm gonna send it back to Alex so he can show you guys what else can be done um, for NX and um, Katia. Thank you very much, Daniel. So let me share my screen and go back to my workstation. So if I re uh, refresh uh, talk at ICAM.com, I do have now the new post. So I'm gonna take this new version and download it. And this, uh, uh, show in folder. So I have it on my desktop uh, uh, in my download section. And then I will just open Quest. And another way of uh, adding a post is just drag and drop inside of Quest. And then afterwards, you can uh, take that post and holding the control, you can copy it to whatever DBF uh, database you have. So here, I'm just going to add it. And since it has the same name, it's going to add on top of it. So if we look at the help, this is 133. So this is one minute ago generated by uh, by Daniel. So I'm going to open that one and close the previous one. And if I extract everything, I do have the miscellaneous and mis uh, miscant features. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test the post. Oh, I need to close Genera. So I'll take the test the post to make sure that there's no uh, code that interfere with one another. So still complete su uh, successfully. And I do have my cycle 832 at the, uh, before tool change, cycle 832 after tool change. So nothing changed. This is, uh, those are completely separated uh, one from another. So this is pretty good. So the next thing I'll do is I'll show you how that you can use uh, user defined events inside of NX, uh, which are interface that you can code using TCL language. We won't show you how to code it today, but uh, I just want to point out that you can use that kind of, uh, of interface to just simplify yourself 
instead of having to write down set slash machine tall uh, with all the parameters each and every time you want to modify it, you can only uh, you can have a interface that will just let you choose what you need to have and make it much uh, much faster. So here I have a cycle 832 parameter set up, which I only have three things to select. Do I want to turn on or off the cycle 832? So if I uncheck it, this value will be set to zero and this value will be uh, set to off. And if I have it checked, it's going to put the value that I have here. So here I have a default value of two, uh, two tau and the roughing value. And I'm just going to click on OK. And when I output my, uh, my code, uh, it's going to out the, the, T, uh, the UDE is set to output the code correctly uh, for me. So if I go, I'll put it on the desktop uh, and just show you the output. Okay, why? Okay, so I'll click on okay. And now if I take a look, I do have my set machine tall 0 0.002 uh, rough. So it outputs it for me without uh, to the correct place because I selected where I wanted to go. And I just have to select my parameters, enter my value and that's it. So uh, less typing, just choose the, uh, the correct parameter and uh, I'm okay. And if I go to uh, an X uh, and go to my UDE that I have on my multicam here, just click on open and test. Then I have my output being outputted correctly. So it's much, good, it's much quicker and uh, less chance of having the uh, of having an error if uh, the code is outputted automatically for katia we are using a different method method instead of using a interface uh, we use a, a custom pp table so when you have uh, a inside of an operation for example facing for this particular example we have the machining tolerance Internally to CATIA, those, uh, those values are assigned to a variable that are accessible through a PP table. Uh, there's, a, there's the automatic ones generated by uh, CATIA, and there's the specific ones that you can have if you go into pro in the properties and then in the specific section, you can add integers, doubles, and string. You would give it a name and a value and then add it. So let's take a look at the PP table that I created. So here I just have the PP table output the set machine tall. And then I have percent, uh, percent MFG machining tolerance. So the first one is the, uh, the variable accessible through Katia. And the capitalization is really important. So you really need to have, uh, you really need to have the, to have the same uh, capitalization as what's defined. And same thing for the machining type. This is the variable we'll create. We'll need to make sure that we have the exact capitalization. So to put, uh, to take it, I'm just gonna copy it. And then we have a single quotes at the beginning with a percent uh, to access that variable. And then I'll go back to Katia and here in my specific, attribute type string. I'm going to copy that machining type and then I'm going to put it as a uh, double quote rough. And I put, there you go. And then I click on add, click on okay. And now I just need to make sure that I use the PP table that has that modification. So instead of using my normal ICAM uh, PP table, I'm going to use the inch underscore machine tall that I prepared. So when I output my code, this will output the code correctly. So here I have the output already done. 
which is this one with the PP table. And then I have a set machine tall with the value from the operation and then my ROS state. And if I post, since it's the same command, it's gonna do the same thing uh, and behave the same way. And then you also have a, uh, another uh, another well, not another way but if i don't put that specific value in the properties if i don't put that attribute and remove it uh, what it's going to do is that the code will look well i'll put like that so you just have set machine tall and the value so you need to take your uh, make uh, sure to post take that into account so if we have set machine tall here and put if dollar p2 is equal to dollar null so there's no value then i want to i'll want to set a uh, i'll define this as a uh, turn off value so i'll put my tall value equal to 0 and my tall type uh, equal to either uh, single quote, double quote off, uh, double quote, single quote, or just simple single, single quote. Because we have set in the operation event that if we have an empty tall type, uh, we would be good. And else I want to output the value that we put uh, before. So the next part, would be to, uh, since we have implemented cycle 832, uh, let me just show you a quick example, make sure that I have saved this. And now if I go and select my Katia, my, uh, my app folder, and then my PP table, and just put as Katia and test. So there's a warning. I need to check what's the warning. Invalid set DAX. So I did, I did put an error in there. In there. So the best way of doing of uh, doing this would be through the actual interface. So it's going to be easier to debug what's happening. And if we take a look at the set machine tall, we'll need to put this as a optional variable because we don't know if it's a, if it's going to be there or not. So if I compile, I'm going to step in and rewind. Now, if I go to my set, I do step in inside and this dollar uh, the dollar p2 equal null. So I just step in the zero. And then if I go, I have cycle 832 without parameters. So that works correctly. So the next, uh, the next part would be to check that all your codes uh, output correctly. Once you have integrated your core of the, of your macro, you need to make sure the rest of the codes, so like coolants and stuff like that output correctly. In this example, if I run it really quick, I do see that I have no coolant being output. This is because Katia, uh, in the tooling, we haven't put the the, uh, the flooding technology uh, with the parameter. We just left it uh, empty, and we do output just coolant without any command. So if I look at my cooling command, I have two things that I have. I have currently flood for coolant slash on, and I do defer to plunge. So what I can do is create just a quick coolant word. And if it's an empty, so I don't put any parameter, I just simply go with coolant slash on. And now if I rewind and I'll put I do have my M8 being output on the Z5 points, uh, on, the, on the plunge, the first plunge motion that I have. 
for NX, it's pretty much the same thing. Just to output NX, normally you need to uh, set the user uh, start event for a coolant. Uh, so there's no coolant code being outputted. So what you, you can do usually is, uh, for example, at tool change, I would go with a custom command and just go with percent uh, %l01. Uh, let's put a comment so we know. So let's so like coolant output. Output. And then I would go percent %l01 equal $fget. So I want to get a major word and I'm going to look for the coolant starting from here. And I want to check not to the end of the post, but to the first go to we're going to find. If we don't have any uh, coolant being output for first motion, that means something is wrong. So we will output ourselves the coolant. And I'll close this. So if percent L01 is equal to zero, so I haven't found any coolant, then I'll just go and coolant slash on. And if verify everything is okay, no error, click on okay, good. And this if I go with my UD. As we see, we don't have any coolant, but I do have a tool start that I forgot. I need to click on OK. Just let me step, rewind, yes. I now have my tool shut down where I'll just navigate all the way through there. And then L01, if we look over it, it's equal to zero, so I haven't find any, uh, any uh, coolant before it first go to. So I'm going to step in, coolant slash on, and if. And now when we have our plunge, we do have the code being output. So this is just the kind of, th of things you need to, uh, to verify uh, what's the output that the CAM system uh, gives you and uh, in which order to come up and adapt your post to uh, uh, adapt your pose to make sure that it will help with the correct things. So from here, uh, we are done with the webinar. We, uh, we will take some questions and answers. So thank you for attending. And any question you have, we'll be uh, really happy to, uh, to answer you. And if you don't have a question right now, but that you have a question later, don't hesitate to come on the talk.icam.com uh, forum and we will uh, be there to answer any question you have. Uh, uh, right, thank you, Alex. Um, so you guys should have received a poll right away. Uh, if you guys can put a couple of minutes just to answer the poll. Um, at the same time here, we did have a couple of questions um, during the, the presentation. Uh, so the first question would be, um, why not use the high-speed machining setting instead of a uh, custom UD? Um, and that is also a valid method of using it uh, to generating your, your code. And we're just trying to show uh, one of many methods um, to output, to give uh, for a given output. Um, there's many approaches between various CAM systems that you can use to output, um, to generate different codes. Uh, to get to the similar result. Um, uh, so that's the best answer I can give you. Uh, there's never one method to achieve something. Um, another question here, do we have a Hypermill integration kit in Extractor? Um, so for foundation, we don't, uh, but we do have it for our full uh, developers, uh, for our full software. We do support Hypermill for the posting but not, with the, uh, not for the extractor with the simulation, only for the, uh, the posting. We uh, do have our converter that's able to read the hypermill. Another question we have is when using the test object, it shows an error with a macro. How come with engineer you do not see this error when generating code? 
we are not a, uh, we were not seeing the error in Genera because we already did the modification in the test object. So obviously, if I had gone through the uh, uh, through uh, Gen Genera instead of going with the test object, we would have seen the same error. So for example, if I just reopen my first uh, post, so we know we have the TCL error, and then I just go with a UDE. So we're going to have the errors that we are not using. So this, uh, let me remove this. And now we do have the TCL and the warning, the set, because we don't have anything on that. So since we did the modification uh, inside of the post before going to Genera itself, obviously uh, we didn't see the errors. So we don't have any more questions. So again, uh, as I've said, if you have any question at any time, you can always uh, go to talk at uh, .icam.com and you can post a question there. We will be advised of it and we will answer the question for sure. And as I've said before, we will upload all the files that we've used today to be able to uh, test that post. And most of the files you already have available to you uh, inside of the app data of uh, Foundation. So if you go in your tool configuration, let me just bring the window here and go to environment in the iCam app data, if you click on open, you can go to sample foundation and then you have Katia Mastercam and NX and you also have the default post that comes with the, uh, uh, with the software. So you can all access all of them an inch and you have the actual Mastercam program and the output that it gives you. So you can check what's, uh, what's being output and start from there if you wanna just practice and replicate what we have. So again, thank you very much for coming today and stay safe uh, in, the, in these time and hope to see you guys again on the next webinar. Thank you very much.